Praise the Lord. I'll tell you what, it's always good to hear living testimonies of healings and how God has moved in our lives. And I'd sure like to see a lot more of those around here, you know. So, <clears throat> you know, if you have a testimony of something that the Lord has done in your life, just come up and tell me or Mike or one of our leaders or Pat and uh, we'll have you testify because, you know, it's a, it's a biblical thing to uh, testify and to give glory to God. And another thing your testimony does, it says that it, it overcomes the devil. You see, see, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimony. And when our testimony lines up with God's testimony, His word will praise God. You're releasing faith by your testimony. Amen. So I'm really, really excited about this outreach. 27th of August. Uh, bring, bring some good clothing to give away if you like. And uh, we're going to have free pizza. We can't feed the whole city of Pontiac. Um, but first come, first serve. It says it right on here. <laughs> so we're going to preach and share Christ and testify. And that's going to be exciting. And we want everybody there that can make it. So we got these cards to hand out to if you like. And so, you know, this morning I'm going to continue on the series I started on abiding in Christ, abiding in Christ. And I'm very excited about that um, because that's the most important thing. You know, the main thing is to keep the main thing, the main thing. <laughs> and the main thing for us as Christians is a relationship with Jesus Christ. Um, you know, so let's, let's dive into this. Lord, we ask your blessing. We thank you for being with us. Thank you for your presence and just your Holy Spirit helping us. Lord, open our understanding. Lord, as your Bible says, the Word says, Lord, that, that Jesus opened their understanding. Lord, open our understanding. Open our minds. Open our hearts today. Holy Spirit, help us to understand spiritual things and, and grow and abide in Christ. Be glorified, God, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And of course, I'm always asking God's help. Amen. <laughs> Pray. So, you know, in part one, we covered what it means to abide. It means to remain, to stay in, to continue in. Uh, and the Bible talks about abiding in Christ through the parable that J Jesus shared with us in John 15, where he's the vine and we are the branches yeah he's the vine and we're the branches so i love how the simplicity of that either you're connected to the vine or you're not <laughs> or maybe you're halfway cut off and dangling you know you're like something something came by and started to cut you away from the vine and you're like <gasps> reattach me jesus you know so you know so it's so easy to understand that that's the kind of relationship that the Lord wants with us is that we, we just abide in Him. Abide in Him. Remain in Him. Continue on with Him. And so we're going to look at, the, at uh, that today. But, you know, the, the result of abiding in Christ is fruit. John 15, 16, Jesus says, You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Everyone say, bear fruit. Bear fruit. That's, that's God's plan and purpose for each and every one of us. That we bear fruit and that our fruit should remain that whatever you ask the Father in my name, He may give you. So the, the goal of abiding in Christ is to let that relationship flow through us to other people. Being the light of the world. Being a city set on a hill that can't be hidden. Salt that makes people thirsty. And that brings conviction to other people. I'll never forget this lady in Dominican Republic. I mean, she must have only been about five feet tall. And she was uh, from Korea. Her name was Miok, Miok Morris. And she was the wife of the missionary that Ingris and I were mentored in Dominican Republic while I was there for a couple of years. And Miok went into this grocery store one day <laughs> and she saw this rack of porn and i think she tore the whole thing down and said how dare you this is shameful this is bad you know with her korean accent and she's only like five feet tall but i'm telling you she was making an impact that day whether maybe she shouldn't have torn it down but but she was letting people know that's sin that's wrong you know and yes she was <laughs> So abiding in Christ 
causes us to grow spiritually mature and bear fruit. You see, the longer the longer that we walk with Christ, the more that we're in Him. And I appreciate what Pat was saying about abiding in the Word of God. You know, the Word and prayer are, are, are essential to abiding in Christ, where you commune with Him in the Word. God speaks to you right out of His Word, and we speak to Him as we pray, and He speaks to us as we pray as well. So, you know, we see this process of growth in Peter and John. Now, Peter and John, they didn't start out spiritually mature. Um, when Jesus met them, they were pretty rough. <laughs> uh, anybody identify with that? You, 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 the Lord called you and you were maybe not polished yet. You weren't quite mature yet, you see. But the Lord calls us as we are and he calls out of us prophetically what he has called us to become, you see. And so remember the story how the Lord came and found Peter, and he said, let me use your boat, Peter. I want to preach to the people, and said, all right. So he let Jesus use his boat, and he went out, and Jesus preached the word on the water using Peter's boat. And anybody know the rest of the story? Paul Harvey, the rest of the story? So he said, "Uh, why don't you throw out your net on the side of the boat? He says, we've been fishing all night, Lord. We haven't caught anything. And he says, nevertheless, at your word, we'll throw out the net. And they threw out the net, and they caught such a large group of fish that they, they couldn't even hardly haul the thing in. And, and, and Peter fell on his knees because he had a revelation at that moment in the presence of Jesus that, that this, was, this was something from God Almighty visiting him right now, blessing him. And what did Peter say to him? Depart from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. You know? And the holiness of God will do that to us. It will cause us to call out, I'm not worthy. You know, I appreciate what Mike said, and that's true. We're worthy through the blood of Christ. But when the presence of God comes, it's like Isaiah. You know, he, you know, he says, I'm a man of unclean lips. I dwell in the middle of a people of unclean lips. You know, but the Lord sanctifies us. He, he cleanses us. And so Peter was in that position, on his knees. Depart from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. What did Jesus say to Peter? Fear not. From now on, you're going to be catching men. I'm, I'm, or, I'm calling you to follow me to be a fisher of men, praise the Lord. And, and we see that in Peter and John and the rest of the apostles. I mean, how would you like to have, you know, in your ministry, a couple guys that, well, you know, somebody didn't receive your ministry and they went out in the street and said, just give us the word, Jesus, and we'll call fire down on them right now lord just tell us lord like elijah i mean we'll call fire down and cook them you know the lord said the lord rebuked him and the lord said you don't know what spirit you're of i didn't come to destroy men's lives but to save them you know and so that's that's the kind of play-doh that jesus was was molding you know he was using people that had some things in them anger issues had other issues that had to be worked out and God's things had to be worked in. That was Peter and Peter and John and the rest of the apostles. But we find that by the time Jesus died and rose again, they'd been walking with Jesus for about three and a half years and the Lord had been teaching and training and mentoring and like, you know, just molding these guys. And now Jesus had gone back to heaven and now Peter is preaching with John and he says, this is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. And verse 12 says, nor is there salvation in any other, for there's no other name given under heaven among men by which we must be saved. So by this time, Peter is now, how many times did Peter deny the Lord? Yeah, three times. So he was shaky, and he, he backslid, and he was weak in his own flesh. But the Lord never gave up on Peter. The Lord restored him, strengthened him, called him. And I, I, want, I have good news for you. The Bible says that the gifts and the call of God are without repentance. Oh, I can run around the church right now, praise the Lord. You see, because that means that when God makes up his mind about us and he calls us and he gives us a gift and a mission and a purpose in life, he never changes his mind. You know, we might drift, 
We might fall. We go through valleys and mountains. The Lord never changes his mind about us. Romans 11, 29, the gifts and call of God are without repentance. And so, you know, we might go up and down like Peter and the apostles, you know, but get back up. Keep on going. Bible says righteous man will fall seven times and rise up again. Praise the Lord. So rise back up again. Now, here we see them preaching. Here, Peter and John are preaching salvation. I want you to know that when the Lord works in your life and you grow and become mature as a Christian, you'll be able to tell people about Christ. You'll be able to either preach Christ, talk to people about Christ, start a conversation about the Lord, because you've got this confidence in you because you've been growing and abiding in Christ, and you're so full, you're fuller than an egg. And, you know, you get around people, and it's just like whatever's on the inside. It's coming out, baby. I mean, I mean, it's coming out. I mean, I use arm and hammer, toothpaste. What's it? Proxy or proxy something. You know? You know? And uh, when I squeeze it, toothpaste comes out. You know? And so, and, you know, so, hey, it's a free country, brother. Amen. You know? So, you know, but, you know, when, 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 when you get squeezed as a Christian, what comes out? <laughs> Hopefully, Jesus comes out. You know? The Lord comes out. Praise the Lord comes out. No four-letter expletives, you know. You know, when I was a young missionary down in Dominican Republic, I think I told the story. You know, you find out what, what's in you under pressure. And so I was under pressure, literally underwater. This missionary, seasoned, holy man of God. I mean, you know, great example. And he's teaching me how to scuba dive. And I can't for the life of me to get the regulator to work right or, to, to, or the, the button to fill up from my tank into my oxygen vest to keep me above water. And I keep pulling this thing and it won't put fill air into my vest. And I got a weight belt on. And I'm out there in the ocean. And I'm kicking. <sighs> and I keep going blah, 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 under, underneath the water, you know. And I kick it. Oh! And he's looking at me struggling like that, you know. And he's starting to laugh, you know. And I come up the third time. <gasps> and I'm drinking in water. And I let out the loudest fill in the blank. <laughs> and he just laughed. And he grabbed me. He says, come here, Nick. And he grabbed a hold of me. And he only did something and fixed the thing. And he just loved me. I felt so humiliated. I felt so bad. I was trying to act so cool and spiritual with him, you know, to be like him, be a strong Christian. Man, you find out what's on the inside of you under pressure. You know, so, but the thing is, the Lord keeps loving us. Just keep going. Just repent. Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me. He's going to do it. You know, 1 John 1, 9 is in the Bible because we need it. You ought to have that verse memorized. You know, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from how much unrighteousness? A double L. All unrighteousness. So when, whenever you fall, you just ask the Lord, forgive me, Lord. Repent. He's going to cleanse you, forgive you. All unrighteousness. Keep going. So, but, but the point is, when, you're, when you grow into maturity, you're able to talk to people about the Lord with confidence because you're abiding in Him. Amen. You can say, he's the way of salvation. He saved me. And then in verse 13, it says, Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. I check sometimes because one time I thought it was working and I never checked and it wasn't working <laughs> So it's working, praise the Lord. But they had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. They had been with Jesus. Are you with Jesus? Are you spending time with Jesus? If you spend time with Jesus, people will notice that you've been with Jesus. You see, and you'll have a great confidence about that because you keep talking to the Lord and He keeps ministering to you, strengthening you, maturing you, growing you, and you come to a place of great faith and confidence because you're abiding in Christ. And people can recognize that you've been with Jesus. And so the Apostle John wrote about spiritual growth in terms that we can all understand, like human growth, babies, young people, older adults, mature. See, in this room right here, we got 
senior citizens. We got middle-aged people like me and Mike, praise God. Amen. You know, I mean, and <laughs> it used to say that 50 was over the hill. Hey, I, I, am, I am rebuking that. I, that is not, you know, I'm, just, you know I'm, I'm 56, so I'm not quite, I mean, I don't even think I get a discount yet, you know, but, you know, I'm on my way, you know. And, and, <laughs> And yeah, then you get you know young kids and younger people and little kids like that, so we can understand that. Well, it says in First John two and twelve, it says, "I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for His name's sake." You know, he's not talking about biological growth here. He's talking about spiritual growth. You see, I write to you, little children, because you know your sins are forgiven. I mean, a new Christian knows one thing: God loves me, and my sins are forgiven. Praise God! I'm going to heaven. Glory to God. Aren't you glad you don't have to have the whole Bible memorized to go to heaven? Amen. I, don't think most, I don't think any of us would make it if, if that was God's requirement. You know, it's believing on Christ, His death and resurrection. So he writes to this group, little children, I write to you because your sins are forgiven for His name's sake. And then he writes and he says in 2.14, I've written to you young men because you're strong and the Word of God abides in you. And you have overcome the wicked one. So this is going beyond just forgiveness. Now this is abiding in Christ and growing to the place where now you're dealing with the devil and his works that are, he's trying to hold you back and get you to go back and get you to be weak and get you to live in sin and get you to compromise. But you keep feeding on the word and you keep praying and you keep worshiping and you keep abiding in Christ. And what happens? You keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Amen. I remember the story of the donkey. The old farmer said, man, I don't want to waste one of my bullets to shoot this old donkey. Ah, oh, there's a well over here. And I'll just throw that donkey in there and I'll cover it up. It's old. It's going to die. And so he pushed the donkey in the well and started to throw dirt on this donkey, thinking he was going to just bury it alive and not waste a bullet. Well, every time that old farmer threw dirt on that donkey, it just shook it off his back. And then he stepped on the dirt. He said, send me some more. And he kept throwing dirt on him, and the donkey would shake it off and step on it, and he kept getting higher and higher and higher and higher until he got right up where the donkey was, was level with the farmer, and the donkey turned around and went, Bam! I'm not leaving yet. Don't let anybody cover you up. Don't let anybody bury you. Praise the Lord. Just shake it off. Praise the Lord. All the criticism, all the complaint, all the people who speak against you, you know, just, just shake it off. But don't, don't kick them when you get up there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> like Pat, just forgive them. Amen. And just keep on going for Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, and then you got the people who are the senior citizen Christians. I mean, the people who are spiritually mature. It says, I've written to you fathers because you have known him who is from the beginning. So they've been around a long time. They've been abiding in Christ, walking in Christ. They've known him. And it's all about knowing God. Can you say amen? It's a deeper relationship. It's a keeping in the word, keeping in prayer, doing the things that cause you to know the Lord and abide in Christ. And you become like a father. Now, the fathers, they bear fruit, a lot of fruit. Amen. They bear fruit. You can see it. They got sons and daughters. They influence people to follow Christ. They lead people to the Lord and get people born again. They can't help it because they're full of the Lord. And they just share Christ. They love the Lord. So after receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, listen, it's important to abide in Him and continue uh, growing up in Christ. So you got to keep in Christ. There's more than forgiveness. Colossians 2.6 says, As you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him. So when you say amen and receive Jesus, then you've got this walking journey in life with Christ and you've got to abide in Him every day. There's this message I want to preach one of these days called Crossless Christianity. Crossless Christianity. You know, Jesus said in Luke, I'm not going to preach the whole message right now, but I'm just going to give you a teaser. You know, Jesus said in Luke 9, 23, if any man come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, 
and follow me. So the criteria, the requirement of follow, really following Jesus is cross-bearing. Dying to self and saying, Lord, your will be done in my life. Amen. Amen. So in the Amplified, Colossians 2, 6, it says, Therefore, as you have received Christ, Jesus the Lord, walk in union with him, reflecting his character in the things you do and say living lives that lead others away from sin. Doesn't that seem like a high thing, high standard? What? Abide in Christ? Live such a life that affects people to stop sinning around you? I could hear a pin drop on the carpet right now. (laughs) Anyway, just chew on that. Think about that. Because that's where the Lord wants to take you. In me so that and i confess i don't think i'm there yet i need help but i want to be there i want to be so full of christ that people can sense and feel him in my life when i'm around them no matter where i'm at amen um so verse 7 in the new king james just says root listen rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught abounding in it with thanksgiving so the bible says we're supposed to become rooted we're supposed to become grounded in christ through the word of god can you say amen Amen. so as we grow in christ there's many things that come to get us to depart and go another direction Hmm. anybody discovered any well i'll tell you what i'm going to go through seven of the most common negative influences that can lead us away from christ you see and so number one is just temptations plain and simple i mean when you're a christian and you get born again you're child of two natures man you got the divine nature of god in your spirit you're born again but you're still living in this world and in this body and in this flesh and that's why the bible says walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh So there's a warfare going on between God's Spirit and the Holy Spirit, your spirit, and your flesh. So if you look in the mirror, you will find the enemy. (laughs) Yourself. And it's got to be crucified, you know, every day. You know, the Bible says, check me out. Look, you should look this up. Make sure this preacher is preaching right. It says after Galatians 5, you know, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Oh, we love that verse. You know, the verse right after it says, and those who belong to Christ have crucified their flesh with its affections and with its lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. See, that's growing up when you can overcome the temptations that come knocking. Mm. See, so temptation will come. We'll find that in the parable of the sower luke 8 13 but you know the ones that were on the rock are those that when they hear receive the word with joy and these have no roots who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away they hear another voice and they listen to that voice and they go fulfill the desires of the flesh and temptation and they fall away number two distractions of the world just i'm too busy pastor maybe you are (laughs) i mean you know i mean life is full of challenges to just live life nowadays luke 8 14 that parable says now the ones that fell among the thorns are those who when they have heard they go out and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity So, I mean, just being overwhelmed by the world. Anybody there with me? I mean, I have learned that if I don't set my own agenda, the world, the devil, and other people will for me. And you have to be, a a disciple is a disciplined one. It's somebody who has made up their mind, the priorities of my life are Jesus Christ, the Word of God, God's plan for my life. And, uh, you know, we, we all love the forgiveness and eternal life part. I mean, I do too. We all hate the cross part. I mean, we're like, you know, it's painful to die to things. 
I know. I've died to a bunch of things in my life. Don't do them no more. And in the process, it's painful to give them up. The devil comes back. Hey, remember those good times we used to have? Yeah. Let's go. You know, that's, that's the old flesh speaking to you, you know. But the Spirit says, well, hold on. Hold on. What was that prayer that you prayed back there? What was that confession of sin that you did? I never forget this one preacher who said this thing. I'll never forget it because it's so true and so good and so helpful to remember. Never go back to something you repented of. <laughs> Pretty simple. <laughs> but it's true. If you've turned away from some sin, if you've repented and you know it's not good for you, don't go back there again. Okay, let's move right along here. Um, Luke 8.15 you know, but the ones that fell on the good ground are the ones who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, they keep it and bear fruit with patience. That's what abiding in Christ will do. Abiding in Christ, you keep the word of God in your life. Fill yourself with the word of God, the presence of God, praise of God, and loving the Lord, you know. And then you end up, you know, you guard that word and you guard that relationship and it's inevitable. You're going to bear fruit, praise the Lord. It's going to come out in your life. Amen. You're going to influence others to Christ. Now, number three, drifting away from the truth of Christ. This is a very interesting verse right here because this is, this is writing to Christians. This is writing to people who are already believers. And uh, Hebrews 2 and 1 says, Therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest we drift away. <laughs> so, the picture is here, there's this boat that is, that is uh, you know, tied up to the moors at a dock. But somebody comes along and unties the ropes, and as the waves come in, guess what? The boat is picked up and moved ever gently by the waves, and they can't even tell at first because they're asleep in the boat. But all of a sudden, they wake up and they realize, where am I? Man, I drifted a long ways from the dock, Christ, from where I should be. See, so hold on to the Word and don't ever compromise the Word in your life. Hold on to the things that you've heard of and how to abide in Christ. Don't compromise those things. Otherwise, you'll drift. You'll drift away. Four, the wrong friends can influence you to compromise and sin. Now, when I first got saved, it was hard for me to give up all my old buddies and the people I used to hang around with and run with and do uh, things with. And, you know, I just gravitated naturally back to my old crowd. Well, I want you to know, I backslid quickly as a Christian and found myself yo-yo Christian. In the church one day, out of the church, you know, smoking pot. Again, okay, all right. Forgive me, all you green cross, medic, you know, card holders, you know, you smoke pot because you know you got pain and all that, and you know it's a free country, you know. But just ask yourself a question: How's that helping your relationship with the Lord? I mean, if you have a good conscience and you can do that, I'm not here to condemn you. Maybe you got pain. Maybe maybe it's helping you out, and, and you're full of the Holy Spirit, and it's all great. See, I can't do that though. Personally, I can't go back there. You see, because. That was where I used to live, and it just got me in a lot of trouble, and I was addicted. So I can't go back there. So your friends who you hang around with, if they're doing things that are going to pull you down, you might want to make some new friends. <laughs> you see, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 33 and 34, it says, do not be deceived. In other words, there's a great possibility that you can be deceived on this one. Think, I'm strong enough. I can handle it. I'm a good, strong Christian. I want to win them to the Lord. Careful, evil company corrupts good habits. Awake to righteousness and do not sin. And I had to make that decision. I was running around with all the people that were dragging me down. And I was doing all the old things I used to do. And uh, I was completely compromised as a Christian. And for about the first three months of my Christian experience, I was up and down and in and out. And so, well, you know the story. I've testified so many times the same story ran into the church on a Wednesday night, and the pastor said, there's somebody here. It's your last opportunity. And I raised my hands and yelled out, it's me! Now, I don't know if it was my last opportunity, but 
the reality was it hit me so hard that I ran up to the altar and I said, pray for me, I can't stop smoking pot. Okay, they prayed for me, laid hands on me, the power of God hit me, and I'm telling you, God delivered me from pot and I never went back. 1982, glory to God, never go back. So be careful who you run with. Uh, five, false teachers. False teachers have a way of worming them, their, their selves into the church and they influence people for evil and they turn people away from Christ and the truth. Ephesians 4.14 talks about it this way. It says that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every, listen, wind of doctrine. Everyone say that with me, wind of doctrine. Wind of doctrine. Think about a hurricane coming through a tornado coming through, a wind, destructive wind coming through. Well, some teachings end up coming into the church and they're trying to blow you off course and discourage you, deceive you, get you to compromise, get you to join a cult or whatever. I'll never forget 1984 when I was a young Christian. I'd only been saved two years. I watched this video that this friend of mine showed me about 84 reasons why Jesus is coming back in 1984. I swallowed it, hook, line, and sinker. I believed it. And I started telling everybody about it. Jesus is coming back, 1984. 84 reasons why. 84 came and went. Jesus didn't come back, and I'm a fool. You know, it was a wind of doctrine. Very discouraging. I was wrong. Told all those people, Jesus is coming back, 1984. It was a wind that blew me and tried to, tried to destroy my faith because it didn't happen. But it wasn't true. And I recovered. <laughs> By the trickery of men. Listen, trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. So there's some false teachers out there. They're just trying to get enough people to listen to them and pull them to follow them. Okay? And they don't build up the local church. They take away from the local church. And you know what else these false teachers do? They'll point the finger at the church, how bad it is, and the local church and the local leadership. Mark my words, false teachers and wolves, they show up and they attack the leadership of the church. They start to undermine, and they have all these little Bible studies and groups to start their own and do this. Come on with me. It's not good enough for you there. Come and talk to me, or Mike. You know, wolves, number six, wolves in sheep's clothing. Jesus said, Matthew 7, 15, and 16, uh, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. You'll know them by their fruits. In other words, you're going to know a wolf because it's not necessarily going to go, woof, or it's not going to come up and, oh, it's not going to do that. It's going to come and go, ah, <laughs> but they're zipped up in a sheep costume, sheep clothing. They look like a sheep. They walk like a sheep. Man, they smell like sheep. But Jesus says on the inside, they are ravenous wolves. What's he saying? He's saying there's some people who are going to show up, they're not what they appear. And their purpose is to devour other people. Hmm. Okay. Seven, forsaking the, the fellowship of the local church. Um, this is a big one today because we got internet, we got Zoom, we got, you know, uh, everybody out there, YouTube, praise the Lord, Facebook, all that. We love you all. Uh, why aren't you here? <laughs> hey, we love you to be here. If you, you know, if you're in Metro Detroit, you might, be, you might be watching in Japan. God bless you. You can't walk on the water over here to Metro Detroit. We get it. You know, it's a, you're a long ways away. That's okay. I mean, there's, some, there's a lot of things, there's several things where people can't make it to a local church. They might be in prison, but well, then they're in prison fellowship. Maybe they're at home and they, they're sick. Or maybe they, maybe they can't get out. Maybe they don't have a ride. Maybe they don't have transportation. All right, while well, they're watching and they're trying to tune in, they're doing the best they can, praise the Lord. But there's a movement going around now that says that, well, I don't really need the local church. I can just be a Christian and just kind of, you know, go whenever I want, Easter maybe, if I decide to, the church of my choice, you know, and just be an independent Lone Ranger Christian. Well, Hebrews 10, 24 says, and let us consider one another... Uh, in order, listen, to stir up love and good works. Well, how can you do that if you don't get together and know people? 
How can you stir up and love people and help people and encourage if you're not around people? You just wish them well over the internet. Verse 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. What day is he talking about there? The day of the Lord. The coming of the Lord. And so, as we're in the last days, the Bible said, Jesus can come back any minute, okay? And I'm not trying to shame or blame anybody here. I'm just saying what the Bible says. Don't forsake church, man. <laughs> you know, don't, don't, don't leave the local church. I mean, a Christian should be part of a body, part of a church, part of a local church. Um, here's a question for you to mull over and, and talk over over lunch. Okay? Some people go out and have roast beef. Others go out and have roast pastor. I mean, I'm just saying, people are going to talk about you. Let's give them something to talk about. You know, so here's something to talk about. Here's something to talk about. Can you be excommunicated from a local church? Think about it. Because Jesus said that's the ultimate final discipline act of somebody who's trying to destroy a church. Eh, you ask him to leave, <laughs> you know. So if you, if you can't be asked to leave from a local church, uh, reevaluate if you're abiding in Christ. You say, Pastor, that's rough, man. That's pretty rough, isn't it? Come on, Nick. Well, it's true. See, we're supposed to be part of an accountable community. We're supposed to be part of a group of people that love the Lord, love one another. And, you know, some people choose not to do that. You know why? They don't want to be held accountable at all for anything. They don't want anybody looking at their life. They don't want to change. They want to believe in God, go to heaven, but live like the devil. Hmm? Yeah. So when you're, when you're together in a local church, fellowship like that, you get to know people. And we love everybody. Can someone say amen? We're not here to judge people. We're here to love people. Jesus didn't come to condemn people, but to love people. But going to church is important. Being a part of a church is important. And if you want to abide in Christ, I think the Holy Spirit's going to lead you to some local church to be a part of. You see, according to the Word, Jesus said, upon this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. You know, the early church was in the habit of meeting every day. And I'm not saying we do that, but here it is. That's what they did, Acts 5.42, and daily in the temple and in every house. They did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. So here in the early church, I mean, they, were so, they loved the Lord so much. I mean, they were so excited. They were so on fire. Every day they were meeting together. You know, so pretty powerful. Let's pray. I know that this, I know that this message right here might be a lot to think about, you know. But really, if you don't get challenged spiritually in the local church, where are you going to be challenged to grow and abide in Christ? If you don't hear it from me, you ain't getting it at Walmart, I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Might get cheap, you know. <laughs> you get some good stuff at Walmart, yeah. But you can't go, hey, give me a box of exhortation there. Give me a box of fellowship. Give me a box of love. Yeah, it ain't there. Fruit Loops, maybe. <laughs> but you're not going to get this there, you know. So let's pray and ask the Lord, though, to help us to abide in Him and not be moved, but to be, listen, rooted and grounded in Christ and His love. Amen. And keep on keeping on for Jesus. Can I hear an amen? Amen. 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 Well, let's just pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this word, Lord. Thank you that you're the vine, we're the branches, Lord. Help us, Lord, to abide in you, Jesus. Help us to love you, Lord, supremely, <laughs> above everything else, Lord. Lord, I'm asking that you'll cleanse each and every one of us, Lord, for where we fail. Lord, just raise us up by your Holy Spirit. Cleanse us, clothe us, Lord, with your righteousness, Lord. And help us, God, to be... Um, to, to be strengthened, to grow from being a children, from a child that just knows they're loved by God and forgiven, Lord, to becoming strong as young men, full of the word of God, Father, able to overcome the evil one and all his temptations and bondages in Jesus' name, Lord, and cause us to go beyond that, Lord, to become seasoned uh, fathers that care and love, multiply and influence, Lord, others to Christ, we pray. In the name of Jesus, Lord, have your, have your, do your work, Lord. Do your, have your way, Jesus, in our lives. Thank you for saving us, Lord. Now, cause us and help us, Lord, to abide in you, Lord, and to be aware 
of things that can just try to knock us right out of fellowship with you and drift away. Lord, would you strengthen each and every one of us today, Lord, and uh, make us one as you and the Father are one, Lord, in Jesus' name. If there's anybody here who, who would either like to reaffirm your faith or pray a prayer to be saved, Christ died on the cross for our sins, and he rose again the third day. He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And, and, and the Bible says that whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So if you'd either like to be saved today and say yes to Jesus Christ as Lord, uh, or maybe be restored, or re even reaffirm your faith, I'm going to ask you to pray a prayer with me right now out loud to God. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, I thank you that you love me. I thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross for my sins, who was raised again the third day. Come into my heart, Jesus. Forgive all my sins. I turn from my sins. I ask you to help me. Follow you every day. Pick me up when I fall. Strengthen me, O oh God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Mike, would you come and close us out in prayer? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Pastor Nick. You know, one of the things I uh, always uh, kind of grew up relating abide in is also to like dwell in. Are you, are you dwelling in his word? Are you dwelling in prayer? And we have our little phones that we can get on YouTube and look at just about anything. You know, I find myself lately, I take the dog for a walk and I pull up someone's testimony or something or some teaching and I put it on my ear when I'm taking the dog for a walk. I mean, there's no shortage of getting good testimonies and teaching into us because the more we do that, the more we're going to walk in spirit and the stronger we'll be to deny the, the uh, desires of the flesh. So... Um, one more announcement I forgot. Next Saturday is the third Saturday. We got men's breakfast. So right here, 9 o'clock. Maybe Paul and Tracy will stay for a while, enjoy the good weather, and they can come to men's breakfast. We can go golfing, camping, and have a good time. And that's right. We need some golfing. <laughs> Maybe we need to switch the schedule around. <laughs> so if you have further need, we'll be up here to minister to you. But uh, we're going to close in a word of prayer. So let's all stand together. Thank you for coming out this morning. It's great to have everyone here. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord. We thank you for the worship, Lord. We thank you for uh, the testimony from Pat and you just work in your miracle working power in our lives, Lord. We thank you for, for the word about us abiding in you, Father God, and the different ways we can do that. And the things we need to look out for from the enemy is like a roaring lion who goes around looking to devour those that he can. Thank you for um, your presence here this morning, and I just speak your blessing upon those who are here this morning, and thank you for being with us as we go this week and all our travels, Lord, and we give you thanks and praise for this. In Jesus' name, amen. amen.